This is Witchbase News for Friday the 5th of July 2024. I'm Commander Burr. In Elite Dangerous news this week, an unexpected patch to the Thargoid War brings more dynamism and a welcome return of a missing gameplay scenario, ED Observatory wants your feedback and there's a new tool to locate, track and share high grade emissions. If you haven't already remember to subscribe to the channel and click the little bell to make sure you see all our videos and community posts and if you'd like to help support the channel links to our Patreon and everything else are in the description below. As the Thargoid War continues to lurch toward its perhaps not yet inevitable conclusion there's been some significant changes to the wars systems this week that will undoubtedly affect not only the pace of the current conflict but also the activities available to those choosing to participate in it. The updates arrived in two distinct slices. The first was the Thargs Day server bounce which this week came with some extensive notes posted to the forums which you'll find linked below. In summary there have been changes to the flow and process of a Thargoid invasion of a system making it now somewhat more dynamic and less predictable as we enter the wars late stages. Whilst Frontier are saying that, in their words, several populated systems will still enter an alert state, the remaining titans can now, potentially at least, directly invade a human populated system if they so desire, skipping that initial probing and reconnaissance stage that we'd become used to. By the same token unpopulated systems will no longer enter an alert state. FDEV didn't make it specifically clear that those same unpopulated systems won't jump immediately to an invasion but we here are assuming this now means unpopulated systems won't now be invaded at least until we hear otherwise. Frontier are also activating an option to bring the popular starport centric Thargoid conflict zones back into the war. Since the community started winning the conflict and stopping system invasions before they could happen the Thargoid conflict gameplay around starports under direct assault had largely gone away because no starports were under attack anymore. Whilst obviously this is a positive for war progress it was some of the more spectacular and accessible gameplay on the combat side of the war. With the changes this week the counter strike systems which line the borders of Thargoid invaded space and are shown on the galaxy map with a purple right facing arrow now have a chance of spawning a conflict zone around active human starports in the system with that chance favouring surface starports first where they exist. The ports will feature repair and rearm facilities but will not offer any missions. To find the affected ports look for the counter strike purple arrow with a stacked port attack icon as shown on screen now. There is still an issue outstanding where Odyssey flavoured settlement reactivation missions don't appear to be spawning for those same counter strike systems meaning that Thargoid surface unit plapping is currently restricted to active spire sites. You'll find a link to an issue tracker post about that linked below if you want to upvote and contribute to it. The second part of the war changes this week arrived with a patch and associated downtime on Friday morning. The patch now means that the engineer Ram Tars anti guardian zone resistance modification can now be applied to all guardian modules not just weapons. Furthermore when applied to modules or weapons there are now no penalties. Previously the bonus afforded by being able to use guardian weapons in titan space was offset by a reduction in the damage that they did. That offset is now mercifully gone. The patch also promises a number of improvements to instance stability around the titans and, without providing specific details, improvements to the titan venting cycle. 
I'm also very pleased to report that the maximum number of Thargoid ships in Titan instances has been reduced hopefully meaning that the older instances will no longer feature quite literally rubbing shoulders with hundreds of scouts and interceptors as we all jostle to inhabit the same patch of space. You'll find the full patch notes for both sets of changes linked below this video. With the Thargs Day tick this week the Titan Indra enjoyed the dubious honour of being the fourth Thargoid Titan to come under direct and sustained attack by human forces. As of this recording progress on the Titans 8 hearts has been slower than its sister vessels with just one of the hearts now destroyed. The previous 3 Mega Magnolia motherships all having largely dropped like a lead balloon in the 48 hours following the start of their respective attacks. The precise reasoning for the slowdown is unclear at the moment whilst it could be due to number tweaking at FDEV HQ very large portions of the player base will have been significantly distracted in the immediate 24 hours since the target became available. With a general election and subsequent change of government happening in the UK and the Independence Day public holiday and celebrations taking the attention of the US at the very least. In the 24 hours after this recording a semblance of normality should be returning to both sides of the Atlantic as we head into the weekend so we'll have to see how the progress moves from here on. It does mean however that if you're looking to grab yourself a Titan full reward decal or indeed add a star to your existing one then you have a bit more time than was first anticipated. Don't forget as with previous Titans there is a full Thargoid themed ship kit also up for grabs this time for the Cutter and you can earn up to 3200 arcs for helping to ruin the tedious Terra Triffid. Of the many third party tools available to Elite Dangerous Commanders spread across the games many disciplines Elite Dangerous Observatory has for the serious explorer at least become a must have item. If you're unfamiliar with the tool ED Observatory monitors the journal created by the game as you play and then highlights anything that might be interesting or important with a very definite lean towards exploration and discovery. For example when active the tool will call out quite literally landable and terraformable worlds, landable atmospheric worlds, close orbiting worlds, colliding binary pairs, fast orbits and high eccentricity orbits to name but a few. There are also plugins to add extra dimensions to its criteria such as high value biological discoveries and more. Having now firmly established itself in the Explorers toolkit the tools author Jonathan Miller has reached out to the games community on Reddit to solicit suggestions and feedback on what future features they should include in the next version of Observatory. Jonathan is particularly interested in hearing about what they describe as quote pain points unquote commanders might have when using the software, what players would specifically like to see fixed and what new features folk would like to see added. As part of the Explorer toolset Observatory comes highly recommended. If you haven't tried it already and if you want to get your voice heard as part of the chorus on future features for it then you'll find a link below to the Reddit thread about that future as well as a link to the tool itself. And while we're on the subject of must have tools for the discerning Elite Dangerous Commander we've spoken many times on this channel about the excellent Elite Dangerous Odyssey material helper. The tool started out as a way to track and manage the often labyrinthine odyssey on foot materials and engineering and in my humble opinion it's still absolutely essential in that role. The tools developer Commander Jixt wasn't finished there however. Since its inception the tool has gone on to do for ship engineering what it did for on foot engineering. Managing builds and wish lists as well as importantly advising where a given material might be found or what it might best be traded for. Having created the defining cross discipline engineering tool Jixt is still not content to rest on their software development laurels and as part of the where to go to get what you want part of the tools arsenal EDOMH now features a dedicated high grade emission tracker. Not only will the tracker tell you the systems that any given HGEs have been found in 
but also what was found in those emissions and how long ago. If the HGEs have been FSS scanned by another commander using the tool it will also tell you how long you have until a given HGE expires. Both sides of the engineering coin in Elite Dangerous can be very rewarding but they're also two of the trickier systems in the game to navigate through successfully. If you're struggling with either space or on foot and not using Material Helper I can't personally recommend it highly enough. I simply would not attempt material gathering or engineering in any fashion in Elite without having it running and the incorporated HGE tracker lifts the software yet again onto a whole other tier. If you haven't already got it installed you'll find links in the description below. Will you be joining a Thargoid conflict zone around a planetary port? How many Titan attacks have you been involved in and are you running ED Observatory or Odyssey Material Helper? Let us know in the comments below. That's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. We'll be back later this week with more videos. Until then 07 CMDRs follow the greens on the way out and do keep clear of the toast rack. We very much look forward to seeing you next time.